tomorrow I'm going to ruin his life. I have been with him for three years now. We plan on getting married when our lives settled down. I wanted to start a family with him. I loved him more than anyone else in this world. I've sacrificed so much for him, moved away from my home, turned down jobs so I could stay with him, and stood by his side as he started to go back to school. I gave him my world and he cheats on me. I found out over a month ago. The scumbag got cocky and I found out that he was cheating on me with two different women. One is a TA at his university. The other is his best friend's girlfriend. I am livid. I write this post choking back venom. I loved him so much. He was my world, but now he will be the world I burned to nothing but ash. I've paid for everything since he quit his job last year to go to school. I was more than happy to help him. I make enough to support us both. The only upside is that the student loans are in his name with no connection to me. It will hurt to push the scumbag out to sea, but I will survive. I have held out for a month, enough time to create what I call the day his world burns. Tomorrow we are hosting a party. I arrange for his family to come, but my family will sadly not be able to make it. I have packed everything valuable already and the suitcases in the back of my car. My brother will come during the event tomorrow to take the car that is in my name that the dirtbag drive to my parents' house. The joint account, which is all my money anyways, is already empty. The event will be great and he thinks it's for us to announce our engagement to his family. What will happen in reality is I will announce my departure from his life. I have already taken a job out of state and have lined up a new place to live. I will start by telling everyone what he is into. The screenshots of him asking his friend's girlfriend to piss on him and many other fantasies his degenerate mind came up with will be passed around. I will hand him the notice to vacate as I have already broken our lease. We will need to be out by the end of the month. I will then end off by informing him that I have already reported he was sleeping with the TA from one of his classes the previous semester to the university and that I am sad I won't see the fallout from that. His friend also has a message for him that I will deliver informing him that his friend group will never want to see him again as well. And with that, I will leave. I will not look back. I will set his life on fire and walk away. Damn! But you know what? Bravo to you. Because if you're going to break up with someone and you really want it to hurt, this is how you do it. Calm, collective. She gave herself time to really process everything and didn't really just do it off pure emotion. And gave herself a really good um, setback plan to go back home and she already has a job lined up. That's how you do it. I know it's hard, but like... We need an update. Yesterday, I planned to ruin his life in front of his entire family. I worked for a month to create the scenario that would cut him the deepest. I had patiently waited for the chance to storm out of his world in a blaze of glory. And then I hit the front page of Reddit. I realized I had messed up when he was not answering my texts and had not shown up after hours he told me he would be home. I had hoped it was a happy accident, literally a car killing him before I had the chance. But no, I don't know how many men in the world are currently cheating on their soon-to-be fiancé with their best friend's girlfriend and a TA. However, the one who mattered in my plan found my Reddit post. I called his mother and found out that he had run home to his parents. He told them that we had a fight and that we were probably through. I was and still livid at myself. His mother asked me what had happened as he left out a few details. So I decided to tell her that he was cheating on me with ATA and his friend's girlfriend. I soon heard shouting before she hung up. I texted my ex that he had until morning to return my car before I reported it stolen and sent the screenshots of all his texts to his parents and siblings. My car was sitting in my driveway when I woke up. I contemplated sending the screenshots anyway, but his mother sent me a heartfelt text yesterday apologizing for her son's actions and I feel they deserve to be spared from their son's degenerate actions. My father and I will be moving all of my stuff today and I won't be coming back after that. I know you'll be reading this you cheating fuck. You're a cowardly piece of shit. Just know I am not above sending out all of the screenshots if you ever dare to come back into my life. Oh, and all of your ex-friends know about your piss fetish. I can't control what they do with that information so good luck with that. Back in 2018, I got really, really sad and I did not brush or wash my hair for a long time. And so what happened was I got a, a, a rat's nest, as my mother would call it, on the back of my head. And I hid it by putting my hair back in a ponytail and I would like back comb my hair and it was like this big poofy ponytail. And people would say, wow, your ponytail's so pretty. You should do a hair tutorial. I'm about to fart. That was so loud. People were like, you should do hair tutorials to show people how you get your hair that big. My hair was a matted mess. Like, finally, I was like, enough is enough. I took a whole weekend and I took oils and I like tried so hard to work out the nasty like giant mat on the back of my head. Obviously, I made it worse by backcombing my hair. I know that. So I spent three days. I took a sick day off work. I like tried to fix it, couldn't fix it. I called the salon and I was like, this is really embarrassing. Um, I think I'm going to shave all my hair off my head like I think that's what I have to do because I have a giant mat on the back of my head and I can't get it out and the girl who answered the phone was like oh 
well, did you know that the owner of the salon specializes in dreadlocks? And I was like, well, that's not really what I'm looking for. And she said, no, 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 he's great with knots, basically is what I'm saying. So I don't think we're gonna have to shave your hair off. I think he's gonna be able to take a look at it and take out the knots for you. So she set up a consultation. I met with a man named James. He was very, very nice. And he was like, absolutely, I can do this for you. I said, what are you gonna charge me? And he was like, 120, sound good to you? And I was like, yeah, thank you so much. The next day we met at his salon at 5 p.m. He told me we would be done by 8 p.m. We were not. It was 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. He was like, can you come back tomorrow? And I said, I can't because I'm going to Denver, but I can come back next week. And he said, oh no, honey, I'm not sending you to Denver not feeling good about your hair. And also it's just gonna remat. And his wife came in around 11 o'clock and she was like, do you guys want some ice cream or Mexican food or something? And we were like, yeah, that'd be great. Then she left, everything was closed. And so she just went home and went to bed. And James and I stayed at the salon till 2 a.m. 2 a.m. 8, wait, 5? 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. is how long the saint stayed with me. And we just talked about our lives. He didn't make me feel bad about my hair at all. He was just like, this could happen to anybody. I totally understand why you back combed your hair. I bet it looked great. And obviously once we were done, I was so, so grateful. And I said, what do I owe you? And he said, 120, we already decided. And I was like, come on, you stayed with me till 2 a.m. You saved me, what do I owe you? And he said, 120, I'm not gonna upcharge you after I quoted you 120. So I tacked on as big of a tip as I could and I left, and to this day, it's the greatest act of love that I've ever received from a stranger in my life. Am I the asshole for crying to my husband? My 18-year-old son, Eric, just graduated from high school. I'm very proud of him because he has ADHD and school has always been a struggle for him, but he's going to college and his future is promising. I was out with two of my girlfriends and both have children the same age as Eric. Well, I excused myself to the washroom and right before I was about to go back into the room, I overheard one of them saying that I must be disappointed in Eric. Disappointed because he's not studying law or medicine, etc. like their kids. This caught my attention and I kept listening. They continued to talk about how he barely graduated and then they made a few odd jokes about how Eric's probably going to follow in my footsteps and marry a rich older lady. They talked about my son's reputation and laughed about how he clearly cares more about his face and his future, just like his mother. This hurt me a lot. I was heartbroken. Not only were they insulting me, but my son as well. I walked into the room and they went silent, but acted as if they weren't just shit talking. I didn't mention it and simply decided to never hang out with them ever again. But when I got home, my husband asked me if anything was wrong and I just began to cry and told him everything. I've been friends with him for a year and gosh, I don't even know. He was really angry. He had invited them and their families to go on a quick two-day trip and he called their husbands and canceled. When they asked why, he told them there was no way in hell he was going to pay for two bitter mean girls that insult his wife and son on vacation. Well, I got a call from the two and they were really upset. They said I need to tell him to rethink his decision and that they were just joking around because their kids were really looking forward to the trip. I told them that I didn't want to, but they said that I should have talked to them instead of crying to my husband like a weak ass bitch. I told them to fuck off and they replied with, this is exactly why we hate you. Wait, sorry, are you going to go cry to your husband again? That stung a little and now I'm wondering, am I the asshole for not being straight up and crying to my husband instead? The two think I am and my sister agrees that I should have dealt with it myself and I went too far telling my husband. Am I the asshole for crying to my husband? My 18 year old son, Eric, just graduated high school. I'm very proud of him because he has ADHD and school has always been a struggle for him. But he's going to college and his future is promising. I was out with my two girlfriends and both have children the same age as Eric. I excused myself to the washroom and right before I was about to go back in the room, I overheard one of them say I must be so disappointed in Eric. Since he's not studying law or medicine like their kids. This got my attention and I kept listening. They continued to talk about how he barely graduated and they made a few odd jokes. Am I the asshole for crying to my husband? They said Eric will probably follow in my footsteps and marry a rich older lady. When I walked back into the room, they went silent and I decided to never hang out with them again. When I got home, my husband asked if anything was wrong and I began to cry. When I explained, he got really angry. He had invited them and their families to go on a quick two day trip and called their husbands and canceled. When they asked why, he said I'm not paying for two bitter mean girls. Now the girls are calling me upset, saying I need to rethink this decision. They said they were joking and their kids were looking forward to the trip. Also said I should have talked to them instead of crying to my husband like a weak ass bitch. Am I the asshole for not replacing one of my groomsmen after he cheated on a bridesmaid? My fiance and I are getting married in two months. I have four groomsmen, including my brother, cousin, a close childhood friend, and a close college buddy. My fiance's best friend was in a long-term relationship with him, but unfortunately for her, he got exposed as a cheater. I don't know the details, and honestly, I don't want to. 
I wasn't aware of the cheating prior to the time it was discovered. I feel his relationship with her is none of my business. My fiance, on the other hand, does. She hates him and is demanding that I replace him. She said he'll be a toxic presence to our wedding because the woman he cheated on is going to be a bridesmaid. Am I the asshole for not replacing one of my groomsmen after he cheated on a bridesmaid? I was bothered by this. This guy is one of my closest friends and I've known him since we were 18. I want him to be a groomsman. I said that they could both go and just set aside their beef for one day. After all, the day isn't about them. It's about us. Their relationship is also none of our business. She said that she was putting her foot down on this and that my friend wouldn't be in her wedding. I said if it's that big of a deal, she can drop his ex from the wedding and that if she doesn't want that, we can go along with the initial plan. And it says, fine, I effing get it. I'll kick one of my best friends out to prove I'm not a cheater. Am I the asshole for not taking down my video that was a gift for my best man? My parents for years canceled on me last minute because of my sister who's six years older than me. If I had a basketball game, sorry, sister doesn't feel like going out. Graduating, sorry, she had a bad day at work. Well, I met the love of my life and we decided to get married. From the beginning, I told my parents how I'm worried she'll ruin another special moment. My mom told me over and over it wouldn't happen, but the day of my wedding, I received a voicemail. They couldn't come because my sister was sick and upset. I was hurt, but my best man is a jokester. He took my phone and asked my fiance if he could post a video of our wedding as a gift. Am I the asshole for not taking down my video that was a gift for my best man? He wanted to post the wedding on social media and she loved the idea. I had no idea until I came home. Caption was my best friend. He's an amazing person even if his parents never showed up for him. In all the videos, all you could see were her parents. And the sound behind the video was my mom's voicemail explaining how they couldn't come because my sister's dog was sick. On my honeymoon, I had no service, but when I got back, family members were insisting I take it down. My sister hasn't stopped crying and my mom is refusing to leave the house. I didn't take the video down and instead I enjoyed my time with my wife. Story time on how I slept with my brother. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. And I mean, we really gonna get straight to the point here. So I have a brother, he's 12 and I'm 18. And yes, he is my full biological brother. Me and my brother have always been really close ever since we were little. We did everything together. From bubble bats when we were young, to watching all our favorite shows and movies together, to even playing sports together. We were always just super close and inseparable. My mom and dad would leave us home alone while they were at work because they were way too cheap to get a babysitter. And I eventually got to an age where I could look after both me and my brother. Years of constant alone time and good vibes led us to one day watching a Netflix movie and cuddling. A scene came on that was a bit risque and it kind of just set the mood. Me and my brother looked at each other and we just started kissing. And eventually right there on the couch, we did the nasty. I can follow for part two. Part two on how I slept with my brother. Okay, so boom, like I said, after watching Netflix and cuddling, me and my brother looked in each other's eyes and then we started kissing. And then that led to us doing the nasty right on the couch. And yes, this is my biological brother. Ever since that day, whenever we're home alone, we continue to sleep with each other and have great times and memories. One day, my mom came home early and seen us on the couch kissing. She ran over to us, separated us, and started screaming. She told our dad and we got in big trouble. They talked to us about how this is inappropriate and how brothers and sisters aren't supposed to be intimate, but they don't know that we went all the way. They placed cameras all over the house and now me and my brother never have a chance to be with each other. I know it's wrong, but they won't stop us. We'll find another way to be together because we're in love. Wish me luck, guys. Story time on how my little sister got blueberries stuck up her kitty cat. Continuation. Okay, so boom, as you guys know, I told y'all the story about how my little sister got blueberries stuck up her kitty cat and ended up in the hospital. Well, this is a continuation because she did it again. If y'all need a refresher of the story, just scroll down until you see me with blue hair. So it's been a year since my little sister did that blueberry incident. Her and the guy she was trying to impress broke up and she's been single ever since. But 
But now she's talking to a new guy and they recently just did the nasty. But unfortunately, after they did the nasty, her boyfriend told her that it stinks down there. She, of course, was mortified. She took perfume that was alcohol-based and sprayed it all down there. Then she did the nasty with her boyfriend again and they both started burning down there. You guys wouldn't believe what happened to the both of them after that. Like and follow for part two. Part two on how my little sister got blueberry stuck up her kitty cat. Continuation. Okay, so boom, like I said, as you guys know, I told the story about how my little sister got blueberry stuck up her kitty cat and it ended up in the hospital. This is a continuation to that story because she did it again. If you need a refresher, scroll down my page until you see me with blue hair to see the story. Again, so boom, like I said, my little sister new boyfriend told her that she stinks down there. And because she was mortified, she took perfume and sprayed it down there then proceeded to do the nasty with him again and both of their down there areas started burning because of course the alcohol in perfume they both were in the hospital and they were very much embarrassed both his parents and my parents didn't know that they were even sexually active and now they're both being treated ladies please don't spray anything or stick anything down there it's not natural Story time on how I found out my best friend was sleeping with my boyfriend while on the phone with me. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. So I was in what I later realized was a very bad relationship. But at the time, this dude was like a religion to me. I was crazy about him. My best friend at the time, sort of a mean girl, but I wasn't very good at making friends, so I put up with her being cruel to people. She would never do anything to hurt me, right? Anyways, that relationship started getting abusive but I kept with it because you know I was young and stupid. I convinced myself that if I tried a little harder everything would just fix itself. It didn't and after a few months we broke up. Some time later I was at a party and my best friend was a bit drunk and that's when she told me while laughing the entire time how she and my ex were sleeping with each other literally two weeks after we started dating and it gets worse. Like and follow for part two. Part two on how I found out my best friend was sleeping with my boyfriend while on the phone with me. Okay, so boom, like I said, my relationship with my boyfriend became abusive, so we broke up. Fast forward a couple weeks and I was at a party with my best friend and she was a bit drunk. She told me while laughing the entire time how she and my ex were sleeping with each other literally two weeks after I started dating him. Then she goes in details about how they would do the nasty while he was talking talking to me on the phone. Mind you, she's laughing while saying this. She went into detail on all the ways and places they used to sneak around to sleep with each other. And this was the girl I would cry to when my ex would abuse me. She didn't seem to have any idea that what she was saying was literally messed up. She actually thought that I would find it funny too. Safe to say that that friendship ended. Be careful for fake friends out there, y'all. Story time on how I caught my dad sleeping with my sister, his biological daughter. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. So my mom passed away when I was 10 years old. Me, my dad, and sister grieved the loss of our mom slash wife and honored her as best as we could. But the loss of our mom hit our dad pretty rough. Due to the loss, for about four years, he continued to suffer from depression. But recently, my dad has been happy. The happiest I've seen him in a long time and it kind of came out of nowhere but of course I was happy for my dad. I'm now 14 and my sister is 12 and everyone always says how much my little sister looks like my mom. Literally my mom's twin and mini me. I thought nothing of it but little did I know my sister looking like my mom would make my dad do some disgusting things. Like and follow for part two. Part two.
to one how I caught my dad sleeping with my sister. His biological daughter. Okay, so boom, like I said, after my mom passed away, my dad became depressed until a couple years later, he just wasn't. Watch part one to understand. Now I'm 14 and my sister's 12 and everyone is saying my sister looks like my mom. Literally twins, she is the mini me of my mom. And I guess my dad seen this too and he became obsessed with my little sister. He would dress my little sister up as my mom and even became way too affectionate with her. For some reason my little sister liked this attention but like I knew it was wrong. But I didn't know how far my dad would take it. One day I was in my room and I heard moaning. And it sounded like my sister and it was coming from my dad's room so i go over there and yeah it's exactly what y'all think i called and told my auntie and now my dad's in jail we're living with our auntie and my sister's in counseling be safe story time on how i caught both of my best friends cheating on me with my boyfriend yes both of them so at the time I was entering college and one of my best friends went to the same school as me. My other best friend went to the same school as my boyfriend. And our schools were close. We were only like 10 minutes away from each other. Homecoming is when things started to get fishy. I asked my boyfriend if he wanted to come out to our homecoming games and he said that he was busy. Then of course I asked my best friend, but she said she had cheerleading practices because she was trying to become a cheerleader. I don't know, they just always seem busy doing something around the same time. So then the holiday comes up and I visit my boyfriend's family for Christmas. I don't know, something in me just told me to look at his phone. And he was talking to my best friend, the one he went to school with. And the conversation was just too flirty. 